Hello everyone, my name is Matt, a returning player on a fresh account, and welcome back to another Black Desert Online video. Today I'll be starting a series on the progression of my LAN. Before we get into the video, something I need to mention is that in my last video, where I talk about some crucial quests to complete after completing the season, I missed out a whole quest line which is the Mountain of Eternal Winter, which allows you to upgrade the Pen Griffon's helmet to a Nebraska helmet. So I'll talk about that in this video later on, as it directly relates to my gear progression. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that I wanted to get out of the way was reaching level 61, because to be honest, I just wanted to get off the seasonal servers already, to exchange my Tuvala gear for boss gear, and to start doing the long crucial quest lines such as the Magnus. I really wanted to take advantage of the 300% increased EXP from the seasonal servers and reach the maximum level on there, which is level 61. I also wanted to test out Walana grinding in a specific spot that I heard was one of the best EXP spots for my current AP, and that being Muramok Ruins. I started grinding at Muramok Ruins at about 10% into level 60, and I did both group and solo grind. I spread the grinding out over the total of about 3 days with each day doing one session of grinding. One session consisted of two hour long windows of fully buffed grinding. I would say that two out of the six of these hours was done completely solo, and the other four hours was done in a group. Therefore, it took me give or take, about six hours of grinding at Miramok Ruins to hit level 61. The buffs that I used for each session are as follows. Equipped crystals that also provided me with extra EXP are, so in total I had 660% increased combat EXP from buffs, but you also have to add the 300% from the seasonal servers, equal into a total of 960% increased combat EXP. But it doesn't quite end there. There are also two more things that you could use on your leveling journey that I unfortunately did not use to my advantage because I simply forgot. There's a daily challenge reward which provides an additional 60% EXP for 60 minutes, and there's a sealed book of combat, which provides an additional 100% EXP for 24 hours. If in theory I had used these, I would have had 1120% increased combat EXP for a single hour each day, due to the daily reward only lasting an hour, and 1060% increased combat EXP for the whole duration since the sealed book lasts 24 hours. And the sealed book only gets used when you're actually online in the game, so when you log off, the countdown stops. If you also take into consideration a potential golden bell on the server, which did happen once or twice, that is another 100% EXP on top of everything. All in all, I think I utilised most of the resources available to me to reach level 61 as fast as possible, although still not the most efficient it could be. I reckon if you did all of this, but also grinding in a group full of people that were very acclimated to their class and the grinding spot, you could cut down a couple of hours at least. I have also been made aware recently that Miramok Ruins does not provide any drops that contribute to important goals, such as upgrading boss gear at Jatina's. Therefore, it's probably not recommended to grind here, as you could spend all those hours grinding elsewhere and reach level 61 in a similar amount, but also get some useful drops towards progression of your gear. But anyway, you learn from your mistakes, and this was my first time officially grinding on a LAN and at Miramok Ruins, so not only did I have to learn the class and combos, but also learn the correct spot rotations and such. Therefore, it took me a considerable longer amount of time to become quote unquote efficient. After I hit level 61, I also took advantage of the Pearl Shop because there are a lot of really good one time discounts for new players, so I went ahead and got the new Adventurer's Pearl Box that gives me 2000 pearls, and I purchased the new Adventurer's Must Have Starter Pack that is discounted from 7450 pearls down to just 370. It has a bunch of useful goodies inside. I'll use the rest of my pearls for other functions too, such as getting a permanent call your horse item and potentially more value packs or inventory space. Moving on, I completed the Magnus in one night. It took me about 4-5 to five hours using a guide, but I also watched all the cutscenes because I was somewhat interested. Hot take! 
but I actually found the Magnus and Lan in the Morning Light enjoyable, so watching the cutscenes was an active choice. But I did skip the dialogue though, because, well, I don't have all the time in the world. Anyway, after completing the Magnus, I chose the Pen Griffon's Helmet because it is a much harder item to upgrade using Jatina's guaranteed pen method compared to the Red Nose armor and Beg's gloves. From what I read online, the Red Nose and Beg's materials for upgrading can mostly be received from dailies, whereas the Griffon's Helmet requires weeklies. Also, when it comes to upgrading the boss gear further, the Griffon's helmet would be turned into a Labraska helmet, which is worth just a bit more compared to Fallen God armor, which is the successor to Red Nose. Now, since we're on the topic of upgrading the Griffon's helmet to Labraska, I'll talk about how you go about doing that, which includes the Mountain of Eternal Winter questline, which I forgot to go over in my previous video. You first have to fully complete the Mountain of Eternal Winter questline, then, you have to combine the Pen Griffon's Helmet with a Flame of Frost. The Flame of Frost can be obtained by combining 100 Embers of Frost that drop from monsters at Jade Starlight Forest and Shere Khan Abandoned Iron Mine. The Flame of Frost itself can drop for these monsters, but it is an extremely low chance. The approximate grind time for 100 Embers appears to be somewhere around 70 hours. Now that I have covered that, I started Land of the Morning Light after finishing the Magnus, and I've completed three tales as of the recording of this video. As soon as I've completed Land of the Morning Light, I'm going to start working towards crafting my Dan's gloves as a priority, and then potentially Tabek's belt and the Borica earrings, but those two will be much of a further goal. As for my other pieces of gear, I'm going to be working towards gathering materials to upgrade my Red Nose and Beg's gloves to pen. I'm possibly going to focus on getting the Begs to pen first, since I'm going to be needing that for the dance gloves. As for the Oregon shoes, I've read some conflict and information online. Some sources say to buy a pen Oregons from the central market, but others say to upgrade it using Jatina's method. But I've also checked Blackstar shoes on the market, and at Tet, they are better and cheaper than pen Oregons. So ultimately, I'm not sure what to do right now, and will have to do a bit more research. Let me know if you guys have any advice on this topic. Other than that, I'm going to be saving up silver in the meantime to purchase a Tet Blackstar main hand, which at the moment costs about 13 billion. Also gathering materials to reform my Kutum offhand to level 4. If you're wondering why level 4, well that's because the only difference between level 4 reform and a pen Kutum is one accuracy, so it's not worth the hassle for a pen, at least for now. Lastly, I will also be saving up silver to purchase a Duo God Aid Awakening weapon, which at the moment is about 15 billion. I think I've summed up pretty much everything that I've been busy with right now on this character. The only other thing being that I started Bartali's adventure logs, and I am about halfway through, but I'm on a time gated section where I have to kill Quint the world boss, which only spawns twice a week in the night. One of those days which I have work, so I'm not usually on till that late and the other one being suitable for me, but I missed it two weeks ago, and last week I was on holiday, so I missed that too. That is it for this video then, a basic start to the progression of my LAN, but everyone has to start somewhere. And the further I progress, the more exciting the videos will get. Stay tuned for more. I really hope you have found this video somewhat helpful and enjoyable. I wish you all a wonderful evening, night or day, and I'll see you around.